Do you ever get that feeling that when you've been doing something for a while and you realize that you've been doing it wrong your entire life? Well, that's exactly how I feel like in today's video. Let me show you one setting that might change the way you look at visual effects inside of Blender forever. Okay, so first things first, I just wanted to show you what we're talking about in today's video. This is DaVinci. Uh, don't worry about any of this. This is just a uh, kind of way I want to show you how this effect is actually working. Uh, now, this shot is actually a disintegration effect that I just posted a full tutorial on. So go check out the link down below if you want to learn how to uh, actually do this effect. But anyway, uh, we can come to the very end. The very uh, basis of this shot is we want to place a CGI object into a scene. Uh, now, this shot I filmed myself and I also shot an HRI that is uh, actually lighting and uh, providing a reflection data for this scene. And in theory, with both that match to the footage as well as the glove, all of the color management is the exact same between all three of those. Uh, this should perfectly match into the scene. Even the camera data, such as the uh, f-stop, the focus, and all of that stuff is phys physically matching to what I shot on uh, on set, but it's still not feeling right. Something just feels CG about this shot. This is something I've been uh, battling with forever in my visual effects career using Blender. And so let me show you the fix right now. So here is the fix. You can see uh, adds a lot more lighting up here, a lot more rim lighting and stuff like that. I'll just on and off it real quick. So here is before and then after before after to me this looks a lot lot more realistic it integrates the visual effects a lot better uh, than just doing uh, the kind of base uh, VFX workflow that we've been doing for so many years and so let's go ahead and hop over to blender and let me show you how to do this all right so hopping inside of blender now you can see we have everything set up we have our model into the scene and it's being lit by that HRI like I was talking about before uh, quick plug by the way uh, this is from visual oasis.com this is my asset library website you can check it out in the link in the description below but this is where you can download the footage the model and the hri if you want to also i have some free assets as well if you want to go check us out i would greatly appreciate it check it out in the description down below but anyway we have uh, this model this is uh, basically a diffusion texture onto a principal bsdf super basic setup a lot of models come like this uh, but what we want to do is we want to make this a little bit more realistic. Now, I am matching pretty much everything inside of the camera as possible, uh, such as the uh, depth of field, the uh, focal length and everything like that. The scale of the scene is set up accurately. Everything is setting up uh, pretty well, but for some reason it still feels off. Right. And so the change we're actually going to be adding today is in the materials. So in a principled BSDF. What we're going to do is we're going to come to the subsurface section down here and we're going to change the weight all the way up to one. Uh, now, you might be wondering where we're actually adding subsurface to an object like this, because usually subsurface would be for anything uh, to where light would actually penetrate into an object. Uh, mostly it's used for like uh, skin and stuff like that. And that's actually what it's doing right now. Uh, this material uh, for Blender is actually acting like a skin material. And so that's why it looks a little red all around and everything like that. That's because down here in this radius section, we actually have some values over here. I don't know why they call it radius. Maybe there's something to do with the science uh, behind it. But really, these are the red, green and blue channels of whatever tint the subsurface is going to be. So again, the subsurface is basically light penetrating into the actual material and kind of diffusing inside of itself. So what I want to do, instead of it mostly being red, you can see red is set all the way to one. We want these to all be set to one themselves. So basically that is white. And so this is uh, kind of uh, depending on your own shot. Usually I'll just set all of these for one, depending on what I'm doing. But in case uh, you have an object that would maybe have a little bit more of a blue tint or more of a green tint, just know that you can change some of these numbers. But one is why I usually stick with. And so already that is doing a ton. So if I go ahead and turn this off, you can see this is what we have before and then turn it on it is letting light kind of pass through this. And again, this isn't really realistic because some of these uh, materials actually wouldn't have light going uh, past it at all uh, or anything like that. But for some reason, when we add this in, it actually looks a lot, lot better. Uh, and so what you can do finally is we can play around with the scale value. If you turn it up, uh, the more light will actually pass through it and it'll start looking a little weird. And if you turn it down, that'll totally disable everything. And so we want to try to find a value that kind of mimics uh, what we're actually looking for. And uh, now that really depends on your scene, uh, your object and stuff like that. I don't really have a good way to give you an exact value other than just eyeballing it and see what uh, looks good up in your viewport. 
And so for this specific scene with this specific object, I found a 0.03 it actually worked uh, perfect for what I was looking for. So you can see, especially like down here, uh, the lighting change is night and day. You can see before it looks very black. You can almost not see like a rim light of anything, even though there's a harsh window over here uh, that would be illuminating it uh, versus when we turn it on. All of a sudden this comes to life and it reads a lot, lot better in my eye. But yeah, guys, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. If you give this a try, please let me know how it goes in the community discord or uh, leave a comment down below. Uh, this is a really cool effect, and I wish I had known about this sooner. So anyways, thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next video.